Star Citizen has some pretty amazing looking planets, and each of them have their own unique environments, biomes and atmospheric effects. Compelling environments then are a huge part of what appeals to me about open world games. In this video, we're going to take a look at one of the essential planets in Star Citizen, Planet Hurston. But before we do that, let's take a look at the game's galaxy map that you can find on the internet in the web browser. Right now then, Star Citizen has just one single star system, Stanton, in which players can engage and play, but eventually the idea is to expand that out into additional star systems. Right here you can see all of the ones that exist in lore right now, whether or not the game makes it this far to include all of these is open to debate, but there certainly should be some additional ones before too much longer, or at least at that see hope. Now let's start with the star system we all know, our home Sol system. The star of course here is Sol. We've got some very recognisable planets, I want to jump over here to Earth, just to get some context and some feel for what this star map is all about. So uh, this is called the Arc Star Map, you can access it from within your web browser, just go to Google and search for Arc Star Map Star Citizen and it will bring you right here. So Earth, humanity's homeworld and namesake of the United Empire of Earth. It is the centre of the UEE political machine and the focal point in the Empire's commerce and culture. Centuries of habitation have stripped the planet of all its natural resources, resulting in a heavy dependence on imports for the billions that live here. So, uh, some land imports. Old world architecture at New York stands beside modern design aesthetics along the labyrinthine streets of its historic city. New York is not only the political centre of the Empire, but a highly influential beacon for culture. So the star map doesn't necessarily show what's in the plans for Star Citizen. This is kind of, uh, as far as I understand it, a background to the game, providing the lore and context of the galaxy within which the game actually exists. But over time, the game should expand into at least a few of these. So as you can see right here, Earth has a number of landing zones, or significant landing zones that is, over here on Luna. This is our moon, of course. Doesn't seem to be any landing zones, at least at the moment. Another world that we're all probably quite interested in, especially right now today in our present time, is of course Mars. So let's move the uh, map around a little bit here and see if we can locate Mars, which is of course the fourth planet from the Sun. There we go. How does it stand in the future, in the year in which Star Citizen is set? A prosperous and a prosperous rather and populous planet, Mars was the Empire's first successfully terraformed planet. The process was marked by what is today known as the Mars Tragedy, tragedy when a terraforming disaster killed over oh, nearly 5,000 people in the year 2125. So whilst Mars is terraformed, or at least it claims to be and is habitable, it still looks like Mars very much in the present day. So as I said, when it comes to a Star Citizen, the main system of interest right now is the Stanton system. The next one should be a Pyro, more on that in just a moment. Stanton has got a bunch of different planets here. So Hurston, which is the one we're going to take a very close look at in a moment. Then we've got Crusader, Arc Corp, and Microtech. Around all of these, there's moons. All of these you can actually land on, and some of them, well, most are actually very, very nice, but some have some particularly interesting biomes. Uh, Microtech is a very, very good example of that. Uh, there you can find forests and different sorts of landscapes, oceans. Uh, that's something for another video. We'll come back to that uh, a little bit later on. For now, we're going to take a look at Hurston. So Hurston is an industrial planet. If we select this as a starting zone, uh, we'll end up waking up there in our bed. A wealth of ore and other resources are mined on the Hurston to manufacture the company's line of munitions and weapons. Heavy industry has resulted in severe pollution across the planet. And of course, the landing zone here is Lawville, a big uh, city around which we can uh, all can take some train rides if we so desire. Or actually, we do need to take the train rides to get to our ships. Now, early on, I did mention Pyro. Pyro is the next uh, planned star system, I do believe. It was shown very, very briefly at a Star Citizen Con some years back. Not quite available just yet. But the way in which you travel between a star systems is through the jump point. So over there we can see Magnus. And down here, if we can find it, uh, let's just rotate around a little bit. And there we go, there's the Pyro jump point. 
So we've got a nice little graphical lensing effect. This, if we use it with our ship, once it's available within the game, will take us directly to the Pyro Star System and we can kind of simulate that right here. And there we go, another star system, another bunch of planets. So then, let's move in-game and take a closer look. As I said at the start of the video then, pretty much the key factor, one of the key factors at least for any, any open world game for me, is the environments. They've got to be good, they've got to be inviting, and more generally speaking, they've got to inspire the imagination, just feel lived in, feel real, and feel believable. In fact, highly detailed world creation is something that's becoming an ever more important component of the recent generation of games. Microsoft Flight Simulator is a brilliant example of this. Of course, it is a simulator, not a full-on game. There's no first-person shooter component there, for example. But it has an amazing, a fantastic world. Now, Star Citizen has more than its fair share of bugs. Some of them are quite creepy. Now, walking down this aisle here, it felt more than a little bizarre. Just look at the way they kind of turn their heads towards me and watch me walk past in a very, very creepy fashion. Star Citizen is known for having bugs, but it's also known for having some amazing worlds. So we're right here on Planet Hurston. There are a few others we can look at. That will be for another video. We may travel to Microtech, for example, and also take a look at some of the moons out there. But as I say, that's for another video. In this video, I just wanted to get a feel, a conveyor feel for how it feels flying around. Get in the ship at your landing pad, flying around a planet, going up into space perhaps, traveling around in orbit, and landing down at a destination. In my opinion, this particular aspect of the game is an area where Star Citizen is unrivaled. Now, Hurston, I'd say, certainly isn't the most uh, lush planet. There's no uh, complex forests here, there's no uh, wildlife. You're not going to be walking around through massive plains of grass. That's not what the planet is about. Hurston, as the uh, description said on the star map, is an industrial planet, and it very much shows. We can see a pollution in the atmosphere here, but nonetheless, the atmosphere does have a very nice effect going on. And this becomes all the more apparent as you fly upwards and slowly leave the planetary atmosphere. And when I say slowly, I was flying especially slow here, so I'm going to accelerate the footage up by about 500%, just so you can get a bit of a feel for what that looked like. The planetary tech in Star Citizen then is iterative. Uh, CIG are constantly improving on this as they go along. One thing that's important to point out though is that the planets in the Star Citizen are not real size. They are only a fraction of the real size in some cases, just one tenth of a, a genuine planet of equivalent size. But size, as they say, isn't everything, and it certainly isn't everything when it comes to Star Citizen. So, moving around the planets is a pretty quick affair. As long as you get away from the planetary surface a little bit, you'll be able to use the game's quantum drive, which allows you to travel very, very fast, both around planets as well as across the depths of the star system. Now, here in the distance, you can see a little outpost, a kind of settlement where we can land, and this might be a destination if you were to do a delivery or courier mission, for example. Talking about missions, missions and combat and all those lovely other activities may certainly be a primary focus for Star Citizen, but when it comes to planets, it's not about combat, it's not about missions, at least not for me. Where I feel planets really come into their own then, is that moment when you leave your ship. It's not at all bad for a planet that could be considered barren, is it? Keep an eye out for some future videos then, where I'll be checking out the other planets, as well as their history and their lore. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys and girls next time.